Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. I have to say I like Electric Company much more than I liked Romper Room. I don't know. I'm kind of like a Barney guy. Barney came out when you were like 16. Yeah, whatever. Speaking of childhood flashbacks, we are kicking off tonight's episode with the Star Wars game. I'm sorry, it's actually it's a prequel game, so it has nothing to do with our childhood. Morgan, come on, come on. It's, 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 it's still Star Wars. It has Jedis. It has lasers. It has Jedis. When Blazing it comes to blazers. Star Wars, if it's not Han Solo, it's crap. I love you. I know. Jesus, God, that was distressing. We did Geek Death Con 1. Oh, oh. How about a nice game of chess? Great. It's great. Okay, let's get out of the 80s and back to the future with Star Wars The Clone Wars. No! 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 Stop the review. Okay, you, you, you probably know this, so do you. We start way too many Star Wars reviews with that stuff. Yep. So, how about we try something a little bit different this time? Like, like, like a montage of stuff from the game. After scrapping the Separatist droid legions on the GameCube and PlayStation 2 last year, Star Wars The Clone Wars strikes back on the Xbox. Like most Xbox versions, it's essentially the same game as before, just prettier. Clone Wars reenacts the Battle of Geonosis from the end of Episode 2, then takes you through several new battles. You'll control everything from Republic gunship to prototype scout walkers to lightning-fast speeder bikes. Each is extremely good at mowing down hordes of Separatist forces. Ooh, some of these droid tanks' death acrobatics would do Tony Hawk proud. We've reached the base perimeter, sir. Reaching the wall now. Responsive and fluid controls make the transitions between vehicles relatively painless. The game does slow down and stutter a bit in places. Yeesh, like right there. But there's so much happening on screen all the time that it's at least easy to see why. However, one very questionable design choice puts a big old damper on the fun. Anakin, a convoy of Republic troops is headed back to the base. Make sure they get here safely. Just about every stage in the game consists of one or more escort missions. Master, the convoy needs your assistance. We hate escort missions. The transports are taking damage. They need help. Maybe you should have put some guns on them or something. Worse still, I'm in Clone Wars, the fire. reason behind the escorting often makes no sense. My hull is critical. Ah! I I've lost Master Luminara. I cannot proceed without her. Why not? You have a planet to invade. When the Allies hit the beaches in Normandy, did only one guy know the way to Berlin? Follow me! Come on, I appreciate the need to look after my wingman, but there has to be a more inventive way to add challenge to a game. If the campaign was the entire game, Star Wars The Clone Wars would probably walk away with a 3 out of 5. However, the multiplayer that was so excellent in the GameCube version of the game is back with a new twist. This time, it's online. Player 2 is in the lead. Yes, Xbox Live subscribers can now duke it out against opponents nationwide. New team is victorious. The voice communication lets you recreate a few choice Star Wars moments, too. Red 5 standing by. Aw, oh, man! Red 5 is the original trilogy! This is the prequel! Motherfucker! Well, what do you say in the prequels, then? Yippee! Okay, so gunships and battle droids aren't quite as exciting as snow speeders and ad -ads. It's still Star Wars, and it's still great fun. In addition to standard deathmatch, there's a conquest mode. Conquest not only requires you to capture and hold bases, but adds in the ability to command computer-controlled units produced by your bases. Red outpost destroyed. The result is a fast action team game with a pinch of real-time strategy. The Xbox version's conquest mode is much better with totally refurbished base models and even the ability to launch guided missiles from outposts. Our favorite multiplayer pastime in Clone Wars is Jedi Academy. It's a co-op mode that pits the players against ever-increasing waves of enemies. Player three is in the lead. Player four is in the lead. Player three is in the lead. Close game. Never has voice communication been so vital to survival. Tanks from behind, move it, move it. Stay on target. Now this is pod racing. Man, shut up. Average single player and stellar multiplayer add up to a strong four out of five for Star Wars The Clone Wars. 
Now, if we could only get a similar title with X-Wings and TIE Fighters. Come here, come here. We want the original trilogy ships. X-Wings, TIE Fighters, we want them online. LucasArts, listen to us. Somebody. Yeah, the last time you could go online with one of these uh, games was an X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, and that was 99. Yeah, yeah, that's the 20th century. Yeah. Now, Rogue Squadron 3, that is coming out for the GameCube, and that's going to have multiplayer. Once again, it looks like it's going to be mm -hmm. split-screen action. Well, we can dream. You know what? I aim a little higher than cooperative multiplayer play when I dream. Aspirations.